channel guys today I'm going to go through the installation of uh, the Ryko catch can um, at a later date I will fit the fuel filter but at this stage um, we're just going to do the catch can now the bracket does do both um, you actually buy the kit which is that um, big box which is the as you can see the part number is RVSK105 um, that gives you the bracketry and all the fittings and hoses to fit the catch can and the fuel filter. Uh, all you have to do is to buy separately then is the catch can and the fuel filter. Um, this comes with um, full comprehensive instructions. Um, I'll move in a little bit closer. Okay, as you can see, that's the um, fuel filter bracket kit. You get everything, all your fittings, all your connectors to go into the original fuel filter um, and also gives you the thread sealant tube as well to seal all the threads up. Um, quite a very good little kit there. Um, and then just moving over to the one beside it, which is your one for the catch can. So the same thing, gives you all your, your hose for your um, drain. If you want to use it so you can sort of have it draining down near where the original um, sump plug is just to make it easy so you can drain it each time you do your oil change plus all your hose clamps and all that sort of stuff and also it also has the two molded hoses there for your catch can so no chances of kink in the hoses they've got a nice cover over the top of them to help protect them um, and this little hose is uh, for when you fit the fuel filter it's just to go between the factory fuel filter and the secondary one and then just moving over here that is actually the, the catch can itself so um, and then if we just scroll back over here uh, as you can see the bracket is quite thick heavy duty gauge steel looks like it's fully laser cut welded um, yeah so obviously that's where your your original fuel filter goes that's where your secondary fuel filter goes um, then your catch can mounts here um, yeah it just utilizes um, a couple of mounting points where your factory wiring harness mounts uh, gives you two more mounting holes there to cable tie your wiring harness to um, And then yeah, also supports itself where the original fuel filter bracket is So quite a very strong once that's mounted in place. That's not going to go anywhere Quite a well-built unit um, I'll just move this stuff out of the way And we'll have a look through the actual the instructions so the instructions are quite comprehensive um, let's zoom in there a little bit so yeah gives you a rundown of everything that's in the in both boxes um, and then it gives you step by step color photos of exactly how to fit the bracket And then, you know, then it goes on to step by step on how to fit the fuel filter and how everything there. There's that hose that comes in the kit. You reuse the factory inlet hose. Um, yep. Yeah. And then same with the catch can. So there's your two hoses that come in the kit. Nice and neat. Um, and quite easy to follow. And that's it. There we go. We'll get the car in the shed and we'll move on to fitting the Ryko catch can and fuel water separator kit. So, just got the car in the shed. As you can see, just down there where that cable goes through, just there. Um, that's where we're going we're gonna to remove that, remove that bracket off the wall there. Um, that's where part of the the new bracket goes and then obviously 
these two bolts here, we undo those, lift the factory fuel filter up, slide the bracket in there, um, and that's it. So, by looking at it, you just need a screwdriver, 12mm and a 10mm socket or spanner. Alright, we'll get it in place and see how it looks. So as you can see there, it just, a little screwdriver, pops the bracket off, and then they also arcs in the instructions just to remove that plastic clip. Obviously don't throw it away, you will need it again along with the bracket. Um, if you ever take the catch can off and want to reinstall it. So there we go, two 10mm nuts. There's the bracket that we remove, so we'll utilise the two nuts. But that little bracket and the plastic clip I will store somewhere, so yeah, if I ever need it in the future, um, I can install it back to factory. So now to just loosen off the bolts on the factory fuel filter. Just um, two 12 mil. And then obviously the bracket just comes in. So you just lift the fuel filter up. Slide that back on there. Just... Um, obviously finger tight just put these on just to so it doesn't pop off it's just a matter of um, lining up those two bolts like that radio once they're on once those are back on, then we can tighten that up, and then obviously get in the back there and tighten those two nuts up. So obviously you can see there. Bracket's nice and neat, plenty of room to mount everything up. Now all I've got to do now is over the back there, those two holes is just feed a cable tie through there. Cable tie that harness back onto there. Uh, and then we're ready to fit the catch can. Okay, as per the instructions, it says to obviously line it up with these two ports coming straight out. So the back bracket directly behind them. Uh, you can virtually line the bracket up with the Ryko. I don't know whether you can see that. There's a Ryko label there. Line it up in line with that. Um, if you are going to utilise the drain hose, um, you have to remove this. And obviously you can see there is a little rubber O-ring there. You just have to remove that O-ring. And then obviously reinstall. Reinstall that back in there and all that is going to allow is obviously for the oil to run straight down the hose and then it runs into this and then obviously um, that has got your o-ring and everything in there to seal it so that's just what you obviously when you drain it just comes out the end there turn it lock it it's closed push it up turn open obviously the whatever's in the catch can drains out and then there you go nice and simple well we'll get back to the installation of the catch can so at this stage i'm going to install the clear hose to the bottom of the catch can um just so i can feed it down through um and then have it then i can locate it once i get it into the car saves trying to get this on while it's in the car so I have some drain hose clamps there obviously just open that up slide that a fair way up and then obviously all it is is just a matter of pushing that and then Installing the little spring clip. 
which is quarter taut fit. Over there, which being a drain hose, it's quite a tight fit. I don't think it really probably needs the spring clip, but instructions say to fit it, so that's what we'll do. So I'm just get in here. Feed that line down and stay away from anything. Looks like it could get hot. Okay. I had a bit of a change of plans there. I removed the um I, the drain hose. I've refitted that little o-ring and all I'm gonna do is every time the car gets serviced, you just um pop that up, take it out. Um Obviously, just loosen that off and you can drain it into a container. Um, you probably wouldn't even have to um, remove remove it completely from the car. You wouldn't even have to remove the hoses to be able to do that. Um, so, that's my plan of attack. Um, once the catch can is in the bracket, it just pushes down. Locks into place and it's not going to go anywhere. So now we'll move on to fitting the, the two hoses, which to get access to the PCB hose, uh, you got to remove your top cover. So obviously there's two 10 mil bolts here. Sorry, two 10 mil nuts. Them there. And then obviously by the sounds of it, this has never been off. This pulls off. While we're in there, we'll probably give her a clean. So this is the hose that we have to remove. The factory PCV hose so just obviously two clamps pull them out of the way and just pops off that way and same with that one nice and simple and as you can see there is a bit of oil in there so we'll just give those two ends just a bit of a clean. Clean up now as this car has 90,000 Ks on the clock. Uh, when we bought it, it had 85. Um, so, you know, I probably will later on do an intake clean. Um, but this, this stage, I just want to get the catch can fitted. Okay, so you get your first hose, which obviously goes on the lower port. So the large end goes to the catch can, uh, and it feeds around and then goes on to the outlet port of the PCV. Um, as I said, they are molded hoses just takes you know just a bit of fiddling around just to get them to fit in there nicely just make sure there's no kinks uh, once they're where you like them obviously just get the spring clips put them in place Same with this one, good pair of pliers, really helps with this. And there's that. Okay, so that's that one, and we'll move on to the second hose. Okay, on there.
make sure you got it pushed all the way home and slide your clamp back obviously if you wanted to you could use normal hose clamps um, but this is obviously what um, Ryko have supplied in the kit so this is what we'll use the ones on there yeah nice and clear no kinks um, yeah quite happy with that no kinks in the hoses that's all nice and tight it's not going to rub on anything um, yeah so that's the installation um, all I'm going to do now is just refit the um, top of the cover and obviously just check to make sure there's no leaks so, as you can see I've given the um, inner cooler a good vacuum and I'll install the top cover slide in the back there and your two bolt holes up and then um, reinstall your two two 10 mil nuts and obviously job done looks like a factory fit um yeah very happy with that um stay tuned for the next video where we install the fuel filter which looks like quite easy job now that um everything else has been fitted it's just a matter of bolting it in hooking up a couple of fuel lines and priming it up Okay guys, just um, a quick one while we're still in the shed, uh, I thought I'd just show you the little mod I've done on the airbox. Obviously we all know that Toyotas have issues with the airbox dusting, so obviously I'm using a Ryko filter. Um, see if I can get in there and show it the best as possible as you can see I've added a rubber extra rubber seal around the inside of the airbox and as you can see that red dusting was like that when I installed the seal when I installed the seal I didn't have anything to clean the airbox out with properly um, when it wasn't actually home when I done it that's why I'm filming it now so I'm pretty happy with that it hasn't gotten any worse uh, while I'm at home in the shed I am gonna um, give that a good clean hose out and then monitor it from now um, but obviously it hasn't gotten any worse from when I fitted it so um, problem solved okay obviously now you can see I've given it a clean so I'm going to give the um, sensor a bit of a clean with some air sensor cleaner, whack it all back together, and we'll double check it um, when I do the next service, or when the next service is done. Okay, I'll just go through. Obviously didn't show taking it out, but obviously the filter goes in. Obviously feed the pipe back in. Line it all up. Make sure your clips are out of spot. It is noticeable that the t clips do have a lot more tension on them with that extra seal in them. Um, obviously get your sensor. Plug it back in. Put the wiring back into place. And redo up your hose clamp. Job done. So if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. Um, subscribe to the channel if you already haven't. Um, 
any comments or questions or anything I should have done differently, please let me know. Thanks guys.